What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. So the Flipper Zero has been out for literally years now, so that brings us to the question, what's next? Now, many people don't even know that when the Flipper Zero originally came out, it was already running on relatively outdated technology. With the popularity of the Flipper Zero and how easy it's become to actually learn ethical hacking, it's kind of surprising that the market's not literally flooded with different devices like this. Well, it turns out there actually are some devices out there trying to be the next Flipper Zero. Now, there are some developers out there, including the Flipper developers, that are trying to create the next big thing. But today, we're going to try to answer the question, what's next? Let's do it. A wise person once said that in order to try to predict the future, it's important to understand the past. So the Flipper Zero Kickstarter started way back in June of 2020 after eight months of development. And then it took all the way until January of 2022 for those units to ship out to backers. So that makes the Flipper Zero over four and a half years old already. And as we all know, technology advances so quickly. If this was something like a cell phone, it would be considered completely out of date by now. Their Kickstarter raised over $5 million. And according to Flipper, they've sold half a million units. That's totally insane to think that there's half a million Flipper Flipper Zeros out there in the wild. And if you're one of those people that have one of those and haven't pressed the subscribe button, just give it a little poke right now. I appreciate you. I don't know if you guys were around for the beginning of Flipper Zero when they were selling out in literally seconds. It didn't matter how big the restock was, 6,000, 10,000, 15,000, like two minutes later, gone. Like they were straight up printing money with Flipper Zeros. And since then, yeah, they've made a ton of improvements to the firmware, but really it's been the community driving all of the interest and most of the really cool stuff that Flipper Zero can do now. So I think that makes it abundantly clear that no matter what the device is, it needs a community support in order for it to really thrive. So you can go one of two ways. You can either build your own community or borrow the Flipper Zero community. And I think the easiest way for the Flipper Zero community to embrace the new product would be for it to be produced by the Flipper Zero team. Now, some of you may remember a few months ago, I made a video featuring the Flipper Nano. Now the Flipper Nano was basically just a stripped down Flipper Zero and it more or less took away all the hacking tools. Its aim was to be an interface face for GPIO boards like CAN bus. Now, according to a recent Q&A on the Flipper Zero Discord, they've more or less scrapped that project. Now, I'm not going to blame them for that. It's not that the product's not good. It's just that it's not cool. Now, the whole reason that Flipper Zero was so popular is because it was a cool little tool to practice ethical hacking and penetration testing. Taking away all the fun hacking parts from the Flipper Zero really means that nobody's really going to care about that project. But with the death of the Flipper Nano, or at least it being put on hold, they're going to resurrect the Flipper One. Now, I don't even know if that's what they're going to call it, but way back in the beginning when they dropped Flipper Zero, they started to kind of toy with the idea of making the next generation tool already, and it was called the Flipper One. Now, the Flipper One one's been scrubbed from the official website, but thanks to the Wayback Machine, we can take a look at it. Now, we've talked about this before in a couple of videos, I believe, but it gives kind of a good framework of what they might be up to in the future. So yeah, basically, this is Flipper 1. If we scroll down here, you can see, you know, it's basically just a larger version of the Flipper, and originally, it was going to use a Raspberry Pi and run Kali Linux. So yeah, this thing was just going to be kind of a bigger, better, more beefed up Flipper Zero. It was intended to have all the same functionality, but also have, you know, Linux running on it and also Wi-Fi and all the other fun stuff that comes with it. And all this sounds great because, you know, you'd be able to SSH or use Bluetooth to connect to it wirelessly and then, you know, control a whole bunch of cool stuff just like Flipper, but with more functionality. And you can see even back then they were going back and forth on specs, which chips to use, you know, how to do everything. So they never really had a super solid plan and where they were going with it. And that's kind of still the case. When Alec was talking about it on the Q&A, they were really not set on anything. They've even been going back and forth as far as what screen to use. They were talking about using an e-ink display, kind of like the Playmate, uh, but also they were looking at TFT screens. Now they wanted to use e-ink for battery life, but honestly, in my opinion, a multicolored TFT screen is so much better. And according to the guys over at the Fancy Gashi project, they really don't use that much more battery than an e-ink display. But I can assure you, as soon as I get more information on the project, I will let you know immediately. But you know what I do have more information for is today's sponsor, Codecrafters.io. Hey, I get it. Coding is hard, but what's even harder is finding a great experience to learn how to do it. And that's where Codecrafters comes in. Codecrafters makes it easier than ever to learn languages like Rust, Python, C++, and more. And you can learn by doing by completing challenges like building your own Git or building your own Docker. 
Check them out at CodeCrafters.io or by following the link down below. Use code Sasquatch, that's S-A-S-Q-U-A-C-H, to save 40% off on any plan. That's such a good deal. Thank you so much to the folks over at CodeCrafters for the support. Let's get back at it. So I guess that brings us to the other companies that are trying to enter the market. We've seen a few products on Kickstarter, but honestly, since the whole Cypher Pro fiasco, a lot of people are pretty standoffish when it comes to Kickstarter. Originally, I loved the idea of crowdfunding, but it seems like Kickstarter is sort of, you know, changing some of their policies or being more lax on some of their policies and allowing companies or people or individuals to create products and market them on their platform that they have no intention of making. Now, if that's going to be the case, I feel like platforms like Kickstarter really aren't going to survive if that's their business model. Now, the Monster Tech M1 still seems promising. They actually had an update as recently as May 10th. They've also adopted the Flipper Zero's GPIO pattern, which is a really good idea on their part if they actually go through with it. There's a lot of us that have a ton of Flipper Zero boards, and if it makes it so that you're natively compliant with the Flipper Zero standard, then the people who made those boards are going to make sure they work for your products. It's kind of like a fast forward button for Monster Tech if they make it happen. When I was talking about trying to bring the Flipper Zero community over to your project, this is pretty much what I'm talking about. So for now, all you can really do is keep our fingers crossed for the Monster Tech M1, and I'm going to remain cautiously optimistic. Now, if we look outside of Kickstarter, we can actually see that there are creators out there trying to build something on their own. Now, I have all the respect in the world for anybody who wants to try to make a project that could even come close to rivaling the Flipper Zero. Now, one direction people have been going is taking something like the M5 stack and trying to make it have some of the functionality of a Flipper Zero. Now, like most ESP32 based devices, this little guy is missing out on kind of a lot. It's lacking both NFC and sub gigahertz, which in my opinion are super, super useful. Installing Marauder or Evil M5 or even the still in development Ghost ESP still doesn't make it anywhere near as functional as the Flipper Zero. So some creators have taken to actually creating their own ethical hacking tools, one of which is known as the Willy Board. Not to be confused with Willy from Momentum Custom Firmware. Totally different people. And in case you haven't heard, I am Yapper. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> now, the Willy board is actually kind of a backpack for the LilyGo T-Display S3. It adds CC1101 functionality, which is sub gigahertz, IR functionality, so it can act as a TV be gone or an IR blaster. And they also added in a micro SD slot. If we head over to the firmware, which is actually created by HRAT, we can see kind of what this thing does. Now, yes, they are pitching this as a Flipper Zero alternative, and it's definitely much cheaper than getting just a Flipper Zero. Now, do they accomplish that? They do have sub gigahertz, IR, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Very cool, because again, we know that the Flipper Zero does not natively have Wi-Fi, and that's very, very useful. You can see some of the features here, which has brute force, it has the Tesla codes, you have uh, jukebox controls, and there's also some other semi-questionable attacks like jammers and roll jam. Now, one of the challenges of when your firmware has features like that, unfortunately, you're no longer allowed to actually sell this as a complete device. Now, at least in the United States, it is illegal to sell any product that is classified as a signal jammer. Now, products like the HackRF or any software defined radio for that matter, and even the Flipper Zero technically can be used to jam signals. Signal jamming is not the actual intended use of these devices. And in fact, when you order one and get one brand new, they do not come with that as a feature. And it's just like the old hammer analogy. You can use a hammer to build a house, but you can also use one to break into one. So that brings us to another project has been gaining a lot of traction and some media coverage recently and that's the hack bat by pablo trujillo and that's the hack bat not the yak back i'm gonna keep trying to say that over and over again remember the yak back clean your room clean now what's cool about the hack bat is that it actually uses a raspberry pi 2040 as the brains of the operation now, along with the Raspberry Pi 2040, it also features a CC1101 sub gigahertz receiver, a PN532 NFC reader, an ESP12F for Wi-Fi connectivity, and a micro SD card. Featuring a 128 by 64 OLED display, this can actually potentially be a device that can technically outperform the Flipper Zero in many ways. Now, one of the weird things about this project is that I actually can't find any link to firmware whatsoever. So beyond the screenshots, it almost looks like that part of the project might not be fully complete. 
Now, this may not be the case. However, myself nor anybody else that I know that have looked into this project has been able to find the firmware. Now, that's not to say that this will never be available. I'm sure they'll make the firmware public as soon as it's ready. And it is actually for that reason that I haven't started building mine yet. Also, this project is a print your own PCB kind of situation. Now, of course, I'm partnered with PCBWay, so I can ask those guys to print me up one and that's no problem. But for a normal user, getting a couple of these things printed up might be kind of expensive. You see, these PCBs use what's called PCBA or PCB assembly. That means the PCB assemblers putting all the little tiny chips and the buttons and the Raspberry Pi, they're putting all that on there and soldering them for you, which is awesome. Basically, you just get your PCB in, flash firmware on it, and you're ready to go. Now, the problem is that for small runs, it becomes prohibitively expensive. Now, the folks over at ZDNet actually made an article about it already, and they said that they were able to pretty much produce four of these for about $40. Now, I'm not sure if that's $40 each or $40 for four, but I do know if that was an actually assembled PCB, that's a really good price. But in general, you know, producing small runs of things does tend to be prohibitively expensive. There's a reason why people like Rabbit Labs and AWOC try to make as large of a production run as they possibly can that allows them to release a product that has a reasonable price and also maintain a margin that makes it make sense. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion that once the firmware is completely done, Pablo might actually start selling these devices already made and ready to go. At that point, I'll probably just support him by ordering one directly from him. And in fact, I'd probably just print one as well just to see how that process goes. So for the moment, it doesn't look like there are any gadgets out there that are going to completely dethrone the mighty Flipper Zero, but it does go to show that there's people out there trying. And knowing just how creative and talented this community is, it's really just a matter of time before somebody dethrones the Flipper Zero as the latest and greatest ethical hacking tool. I mean, part of me just wants people like Rabbit and AWOC and Just Call Me Coco to all join forces and just kind of create that tool themselves. I mean, this community does have the capability, so, you know, kind of a cool thing to think about. Are there any other products that I missed and didn't include in this video? Leave a comment down below. As always, thank you so much to anybody who's made it this far into the video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.